Hey guys, welcome to Two Voices One Bond Episode One. And today we are going to be discussing hope and grief. Our journal that we created. Mm, we're going to talk about hope and grief. So, um, I'm going to start off by saying we created this um, journal because. We took a lot of losses when we like as far as losing people close to us and I think writing plays a big part when it comes to healing. So yeah, we came up with hope and grief because you gotta have some type of hope in the griefing process. And it's never it's not it's no limit on grieving. So don't let people tell you that. So I'm gonna ask um Cyanna, my daughter. That just turned eight. How does it feel to be eight? I'm nine. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting old. Not too much of me. How does it feel to be nine? Great. I'm feeling That's different. That's crazy. You're really nine. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. How do you feel about our journal? Great. What do you think about it? Good because, like, you shop. The colors and stuff is just perfect. Would you like to ask me a question? Oh yeah. Um, how do you think the book is? I think our book is great. Like, I think this is something that a lot of people can use. A lot of people can heal with it and stuff like that. Sorry about that. But, yeah, I think this book can help a lot of people heal, not just us. Because when I say writing plays a big part, well, at least to me when it comes to grieving, because I've been writing since for a long, a long, since I was a little girl, I've been writing. I was writing poems. I was writing short stories. Um, And after I lost my dad at 15, I really took writing serious. I have a bunch of notebooks with poems. It's like pretty much writing was my healer when it came to grief. Why is it important to talk about hope and grief together? Why do you think it's important to talk about, basically, talk about how you're feeling? Rather, if it's just in a book or to me. Because, like, if you just hold your feelings, then you're going to get even emotional. Yes. So if you hold, I agree. Because if you keep your feelings on the inside, sometimes you're going to be bottled up. You're going to be angry. You're going to be frustrated. I feel like a lot of times people go through that. I mean, you don't necessarily have to talk to people or vent to people. That's why I feel like us creating this book was a good outlet because not a, not times out of ten, people don't want to hear you venting. People don't understand what you're going through unless they went through it, and that's the sad truth. People don't understand unless they in your shoes. And nine times out of ten, a lot of people don't care about what you're saying. Yeah, they be listening to you, but do they really care? That's why I be feeling like sometimes when I'm not in the mood or I just don't want to rent to nobody, I just write in my journal because. I can never go wrong. Like, my journal is helping me heal. So, if I'm talking to somebody and I'm writing to them and I feel like it, nothing I'm saying is getting through to them or they're not comforting me in the way they should, I might get frustrated. So, to avoid frustration, I just write in my journal. The best advice you can give me when I grow up. As you grow up? Yeah, as I grow up. The best advice I can give you as you grow up. Is to always be yourself, to always live your dream, to always, yeah, to always be yourself and live your dream. Don't let people get in your ear about nothing. I don't care how big or little your dreams are. If you want to do it, do it. Don't let people distract you. Don't ever care about what other people think of you because they're not supposed to even be thinking of you, right? So their opinion would never pay your, your their opinion would never pay your bills. 
why do you need a glass of their opinion? No. I always want you to have confidence. Confidence in whatever you do. Confidence. Confidence is key to being successful. As long as you have confidence in yourself, you will always have genuinely support system. Because I'm going to tell you this. If you don't help yourself, nobody's going to want to help you. Because if you feel like ever feel like, oh, nobody's supporting me, forget them people. They don't got to support you. And when you become the person you want to become when you grow up and be an adult, they're going to want to be under you. And that is your time to shine and tell them, no, you was not messing with me when I just had a dream and it was on a piece of paper. Because I literally, it's coming from somebody with experience. I was a little girl with a dream that is now reality at 35 years old and I'm about to be 36. I had the dream at six years old and I never gave up on it. That's the advice I got to give you. Be confident in everything you do. And you're very talented, so I know you're going to be very successful. You're real talented. Y'all, she's so talented. It's some stuff y'all don't even know about her yet. It's some stuff y'all don't even know about this girl yet. She's a star. Literally. Literally. Y'all, listen. Some stuff... Listen, we working on so much right now and so many projects and y'all about to see how real, real talented she is. Like, yes. Especially when it comes to drawing. That's just one of, that's just one of her many talents. And now she got braiding down packed. So she about to have us all in the choco. Us old stylists from back in the day, we're going to have to step aside. And let the young ones shine like they deserve to shine. What is hope to you? Hope means like uh, maybe I asked the question a bit wrong. Like, all right, let me ask another question. What do you hope to do in the future? Like, do you have hope? Do you have faith? Like, do you have hope and grief? that grief won't take over your life and you will be as strong as you want to be. Yeah? Yes. So what are you hoping for in the future? Um, I'm hoping for that daddy comes back. Uh-uh. That's crazy. I, like, I literally wish life worked like that. I do, I do. I wish that life really worked like that, for real. And it's crazy. I'm not trying to cry this video, so you can ask me another question. What's something you proud of of, of accomplishing my age? What is something I was, what is something I'm proud of that I accomplished at your age? Mm -hmm. So at your age eight, I was braiding here. I was braiding my parents here. That was something I accomplished that I was proud of. I was proud of. I was really like, because I started braiding at a young, young age, like five or six. So by the time I was eight, I didn't master braiding. And I was working on like perfecting my parts and stuff. But yeah, I, I accomplished braiding and I was so proud of that. And as y'all can see, I never gave it up. Okay, here we go. Next question is, when it comes to everything we have been through, how do you feel? Um, I feel like emotional and sad. Yeah, I feel the same. Do you think that we are strong? Because of everything we went through? Yes, and we're still alive. That part. Everything we went through, we are still here <clears throat> and we are still standing. Yep. And I'm proud of, I'm really proud of our strength because it's not too many people that could have been in our shoes and stood our ground, stood 10 toes down. And I don't know. It's, I just feel like, yeah, it was at times I wanted to break. Yeah, it was at times I didn't want to be strong. 
we all have the moments when we don't want to be strong and it's okay to not want to be strong all, all the time it's okay to live in your full truth like yeah today i don't i don't i don't feel like doing this today i don't feel like being a strong friend today i don't feel like being a strong sister i don't feel like being a strong mother i don't feel like being a strong family member i don't feel like bringing being a strong anything today and you just want to cry it out and that and i tell and i say that because it's nothing wrong with crying sometimes crying heals you better like you feel relief when you let the tears go did you write in the book so i wrote in my book i wrote about daddy and you don't have to just write about one person in the book because it's a lot of pages so yeah it say all right so the first page is an introduction of who we are and on the first first page it says write about a fond memory with your loved one that brings you joy okay so i wrote about um chris we all know who chris is so, of <laughs> period i don't have to explain it and if you don't know just go watch my um go watch my tiktok and look through my tab i mean look through my playlist and yeah my found memories about chris knowing that chris was so excited that we was pregnant yes we was pregnant he never made me feel like i was pregnant alone he never literally left my side never made me feel like i was alone in this pregnancy i say we because yeah he didn't make me feel alone in pregnancy at all. He was so happy, and I love that for him. Have you ever seen a man have his child have a baby for the first time, and they are so excited? Like, it literally brung so much. I got to stop cursing. It literally brung so much joy to my heart that he was so excited about Sienna. Like, literally so excited. Like, it brung him so much joy to know that he was having his first daughter although we already had corn even though corn is not biologically we was not biologically his son he never treated corn different and he been in corn like since corn was in pampas literally shitty, shitty pampas okay <laughs> <laughs> and we talking about the doodle up the back yeah <laughs> i hated that but he never like like he, i don't know it was it's something about a man being a father that literally Bring you so much joy to my heart. And he was so freaking excited. Like, I was like, oh my God. This man was overly excited. And I love that for him. Like, and I was in labor for um 48 hours with Sayana. And I don't know. I feel like that 48 hours, <laughs> I know I gave him hell. And I say that because I know I did. I gave the doctors, the nurses, everybody else. Because I went to the hospital two times within that first 48 hours. And the second time they kept me. And I don't know. He did not complain one time. He did not complain one time. And yeah, that's the memory I have was me bringing his daughter into his world. Me bringing him his literally his first and only child. And that's literally my favorite memory. And that memory, whenever I'm feeling sad, I think about it to make me happy. Your turn. Right. All right. So she's going to do the same question I did. It says, you want to read it? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'm going to read the question again, just in case I forgot the question. Write about a fond memory with your loved one that brings you joy. Go ahead. When my daddy gives me love. Oh yeah, she gave you so much love, like literally so much love, and that's what gave you so much love, and that is so beautiful because literally that is what a dad is supposed to do, like be a dad and give you full love and care and never leaving you and stuff like that. Hondos to Chris, long live Chris. He was the best father anybody can act for when it came to these kids how do you feel when you are writing in your journal um, do you feel like relief like you letting all your emotions on the paper and, yes. and like 
it makes me emotional sometimes. Cause like sometimes I write um memories when my dad was alive. Mm-hmm. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> really and it makes you feel emotional and a little happy too. Because you still got those memories to live. All right, it's your turn. How much do you love the book? I give this book a 10. We did our big one with this book. Don't you think? Yes. Don't you think? We did our big one. We did our big one. This ain't the only books we have wrote. Y'all can go to my Amazon storefront and check out the rest of our books. It's a, it's a couple up there. I made one when I was like seven or six years old. Yeah, it's a couple one up there. Love the book. The book is a 10 out of 10. Cause... 10 out of 10. Period. This is the last question for me to you. What do you think you would be 10 years from now? What do you mean? Like in the future. 10 years from now, where do you think you would be? 10 years from now, how old would you be? 17, 18. You'd be 18. Like 17, 10, or 18. Where, what do you think you would be doing? Let's just pick it up. At 18, what do you think you will be doing? You won't leave your house. Because you won't be moving out? <laughs> and ten, when you 18, which, which, how, where do you think your talent going to be? I think it's going to be drawing. No, I meant like as far as it's going to be very, you think you're going to be mastered by then? It's going to be very successful. What do you mean by that? Like, drawing better. Yes, and I think I'm gonna be doing makeup better. Uh huh. So everything that you do now, and... you're gonna be doing better when you turn 18. This is the last question. What do you wish for? I wish for a lot of things. I wish that we can honestly bring back the people that we lost, but I know that's not, that was never in God's plan. Never in God's plan. I wish for a million dollars. And I am manifesting that. And I know that I will be successful. And I will be rich. And I will not come on social media like, yeah, I know that I will be rich. I will be keeping my riches to myself. Mm -hmm. I will still be doing regular things as if I'm not rich. Because how do rich people stay rich? Think about it. But yeah, I just wish success on both of us. And God, on my soul. On my who? On, on my soul. soul. I, I look, look good. I look good. That's my swag. swag. Okay. Um, Wait, that's not the end. Because I've got a few more. Like, just two more, okay? If you had no job, what would you do? If I had no job, what would I do? Yeah. If I had no, like, business? Yeah, if you had no job and, like, you were homeless or something, what would you do? I would literally pray. Mm -hmm. Just like I do now. Pray within my business. Within any job I had in the past, I always prayed. Um, Yeah, if I was homeless, I would pray. I would find ways to make money i would still be genuine sweet caring person i am today being homeless is a touchy thing because i don't know i've never been in those shoes so i can't really say how i feel or would react I, if i was homeless of course i would go to the shelter of course i would find resources and all that so yeah that's all i have to say about that one more question mm-hmm. what what would you do if you were rich well if i say what i would do what i was if i tell you what i would do if i'm if i was rich Mm -hmm. then i'm telling the world and then when i do it they're gonna know i'm rich so i can't tell y'all what i would do when i'm rich because some things is better to be kept to yourself all right so that's it for this topic and we will catch y'all in the next episode yes me follow us and subscribe and hit that bell button and share if you want to
if you want us to make some new videos. Period. And that's two, all for two, two voices, voices. One. <laughs> try again. Cut. Two voices and one, one bond. bond.